Hey, Denon High School, this is Mr. Aiden, and it is 4.2 Intermolecular Forces, and this is a really important vodcast. I'm actually, it's so important, I'm going to put this presentation on MrAiden.com so that you can reference it. And this tells how strong a substance is, whether it's solid, liquid, or gas at room temperature, whether we can predict it to be um, it, the difference in melting points, anything. So let's get to it. The strongest of all our forces is the covalent network. And that would be something like carbon diamond or carbon carbon graphite um, or SiO2 quartz. And that, that's like uh, diamonds that all you ladies like to wear. Um, the graphite in your pencils or something like all of our minerals, rocks and minerals. And guys, it takes thousands of degrees in order to melt these guys down. And s that is our strongest of all our substances. The next strongest is a thing called metallic forces. Metallic forces would be copper, iron, gold, silver. Anything in our transition metals, anything metallic, even our alkali metals, alkaline earth metals. And these have what we call delocalized electrons. They're kind of like sheets of just, just a sea of electrons. And that's metallic forces. Really high melting points on those bad boys, too. The next strongest force is ionic. Ionic compounds, th those are metals and nonmetals, cations and anions, and they're transferring their electrons. And how do we melt something that is ionic? Now, most of our ionic compounds are solids. And everything we've done so far, covalent network, metallic, ionic, guys, these are solids at room temperature. And if you want to melt down this solid, it's going to take a lot of energy. And you're actually going to have, have to overcome what we call lattice energy. Lattice energy comes from a thing called Coulomb's Law. You're going to hear me talk about columbic forces a little bit. Okay? And Coulomb's Law comes down to an equation. It's KQQ over R squared. Okay? Now, that might not mean anything to you guys, but the Qs stand for charges. The R stands for radius. Okay? So let me just interpret that for you. The greater number of charges, that's the numbers on the numerator, that's top, the greater amount of lattice energy in order to melt. And the smaller the atomic radius, the gr which is the number on the denominator, the greater amount of energy it, it needs to melt. Let me give you two examples of how they would ask this in a question. Here it says MgO has a higher melting point than NaF. Now, MgO, you look on your chart, that's plus 2, negative 2. NaF is plus 1, negative 1, which means MgO... It's, it's a stronger magnet. It's a stronger lattice energy. So MgO takes a lot more energy because it has a greater number of charges. So that's where those charges come in. Let's go through the second example. LiF has a higher melting point than CSBr. Look at your chart of where LiF is, where CSBr is. LiF is a whole lot smaller. The smaller atomic radius. There's less shielding, greater attraction, which means the, the, they're both positive one, negative one. But that positive one and negative one is so much closer. And as we know, closer the magnet, stronger the magnet. More energy it's going to take to separate the forces. Okay, that's ionic. Now we go to liquids and gases, which comes down to covalent, mainly liquids and gases. Covalent molecules are nonmetals. They're sharing their electrons. Okay, and we have two different types of covalent molecules. We have polar and nonpolar. Let's take a look at the polar first. How do we get some? How do we know something's polar? It, it there's an asymmetry due to the unpaired electrons. If you see dots, you say polar. Okay, if and that's what makes it asymmetric. And polar comes down to two different types of forces. The first force is called hydrogen bonding, and that's where hydrogen is attracted to F O or N because F O or N. Look on your chart where F O or N are is. They're the most electronegative elements which means water would have hydrogen bonding. Strong attraction. It takes a lot of energy. It takes 100 degrees Celsius in order to, to break those attractions. Okay, NH3, which is ammonia. Hydrofluoric acid, HF, because these have hydrogen bonding. And they're going to be liquids at room temperature. If we take a look at the other side, dipole to dipole forces, guys, I want you to see dipole to dipole and hydrogen bonding, they're the exact same thing. They're both polar forces. It's just dipole to dipole is not as strong because it's not as attracted to a, a electronegative element. That would be like H2S, PH3, HCl. Exactly like H2O, NH3, and HF, except for not as electronegative. And so we also want to take a look at one thing, which is polar molecules are soluble in polar molecules due to the intermolecular attractions. What that means is water is going to help dissolve 
ammonia because they both have hydrogen bonding. They can both attract each other. But water and oil don't mix because th they have different polarities. They, they don't attract each other whatsoever. Let's come back to covalent. Again, we said we can have polar and nonpolar. Let's take a look at nonpolar. Nonpolar substances, they might have polar bonds, but they are symmetric, symmetric, which means everything's canceling out. And if you're polar, you know you're going to be hydrogen bonding or dipole dipole. If you're nonpolar, right away you know you're going to be London dispersion forces. And what London dispersion forces means is we have instantaneous dipoles, instantaneous dipole moments, okay? And how do you tell the difference between two things that are both London dispersion forces, who's going to have a higher melting point? The greater molar mass, which means the greater number of electrons, gives you more of a chance of an instantaneous dipole, and that means higher boiling point. That would mean something like iodine is a solid at room temperature, where fluorine is a gas, because iodine has more electrons, even though they're both nonpolar, iodine has more electrons, which means more of an instantaneous dipole. Guys, that is intermolecular forces in a nutshell, and if you see, going from our our London dispersion forces to dipole-dipole to hydrogen bonding to ionic to metallic to covalent network, these have greater the di greater dipole moments as we go to the left, which means stronger the intermolecular force, which means higher melting points, higher boiling points, and lower vapor pressures. That you're, we're going to become solids as we go to the left, whereas... London dispersion forces, usually going to be gases. Okay, Guys, I hope this helped. This is intermolecular forces. Keep referring to this chart and really get to know this chart really well. Guys, take care. I'll see you in class.